G'day guys, welcome. No doom and gloom. Um, I've listened to um, Michael Voss's press conference today, Friday. Um, I was going to wait until the teams were announced, uh, considering we have Newman, Hewitt, Gurdon, Pitnett and Hollands out. Um, does anyone else go? You wouldn't have thought anyone else goes out. Um, I admitted, I don't know, does, does Ed go out or does Ed survive now? Anyway, we definitely have five changes. Uh, so I was going to wait to see who they were, but no, nah, for the sake of this, let's, let's just chuck a few ideas out there and in regards to who might come in, uh, to replace Newman, Hewitt, um, Dirt and Pitnett and Hollands, um, it probably appears obvious, but maybe not. So, um, so I did listen to Michael Voss today and the things that have happened this week, guys. And um, there was a real positivity about Voss, Vossy. You know, really, he sounded really strong, um, really strong. And I don't mind that. Like, I, I don't mind that. Um, and I'm not getting sucked in. I'm not getting sucked in at all, and I'm not. I'm not one of these supporters that will look at that and go, "Oh, we'll be right. We'll be right." You know, like the clubs united. And, you know, I just don't. I'm just not at that point anymore. That stage anymore. That it's it's got to be. It's got to be around action rather than talk, and they know that. They they they, they know that. Like that that you know, but they've got to talk. But he did sound positive. And obviously all the stuff that happened to Sam Doherty and Patrick Cripps earlier on in the week with the with the misinformation about the two of them, uh, you know, the captain and, you know, the former leader of the football club playing at se uh, staying at separate hotels to the, to the rest of the team in Sydney. Um, and then Cripps responding in the way he did because that wasn't true. Um, you know, like he, he sounds really fired up with that. Um, like that the catalyst i mean does that is that the catalyst for the guys to come out and and show some real heart you would hope not you would hope not um but just even the jacob weeder in comments you know post game last week that you know with with the the, the stuff with matheson and and luke sayers and the arguments and the weeder went across and said this is on us the players um this is on us you know, we're taking full responsibility for this. Um, they've said all the right things again, you know, in the right tones, in the right tones. Um, and I want to fucking believe it, I do, but we've heard it all before. We've, we've just heard it all before. And why should we believe it now? And every time, every time a game approaches and we hear this stuff, we hear this stuff, it gives us, I don't know, it gives us hope. And I'm sort of done with that. Although, I don't know, I don't know. I just like, <laughs> I just want to fast track to my review of this game, the Melbourne game. This is what I want to say. Fucking team finally showed us something. gave us something and they showed each other their fucking talkies cheap in actions actions finally actions on a friday night and if it's a fucking win against the odds that and this will be a win against the odds then Fuck, they done it. They done it. They and and it, there won't be the obviously. There's still going to be plenty more challenges ahead. Just show us, because the way you've spoken this week and the the stuff around Harry with his goal kiki and the level of support and the love and the stuff with Cripper and Voss speaking the way he did and way weedering. You just can't afford to come out tomorrow night and 
fuck this up. Um, and really, when you think about only a win, only a win, really, and it's got to be, it's got whatever that margin is, it's just got to be a win because it will be a win against the odds. Um, and I know we speak about words and actions, but this is, this is, this is fucking action time. Um, so I'm fucking really looking forward to this one. And I know I've said that the year is done because um, that's what I honestly believe. But just what's happened this week, I don't know. I just I just want them to stand for something right now. I just do. Um, just for themselves and not necessarily for us as support, just for themselves. Yeah, just for themselves. And if that, if that's good enough for them at the moment for themselves, we'll we'll feed off that as supporters. Because um, at the moment I'm just like, yeah, I'm just not believing in them. Um, but I want them to, you know, I want them to do it fucking for themselves, yeah, to do it fucking for themselves. Um, anyway, anyway, the Ds are, I'm not saying they're an interesting team because they're a proven performer, a consistent team. Flew out of the blocks last year after winning the 2021 Grand Final. Um, clearly, probably the best team in it that year. And then last year, they just fell in a hole in the second half of the season. Hung on for finals and then went out. Was it against Sydney? Um, and really haven't, I would say, added a lot um, to their makeup. They've sort of gone in pretty much... With other than obviously Brody Grundy coming in, it's been yeah. I mean, Gorn was out for an extended period of time with a knee injury, so Grundy had to shoulder the ruck. Um, they've had a couple of injuries here and there, um, but they're going along okay. I think they would be happy with the start. I know they're they're sitting fourth on the ladder on twenty eight points, and then look, a loss here <coughs> will just put them out of touch a little bit with the top four. So they'll be they'd be yeah, they, they, they'll be on. They'll be on. They've lost their last two by a combined total of 11 points. Um, and they're not bad losses. I mean, you don't like losing, but they're not bad losses. I mean, Port Adelaide over there, four points. And then Fremantle, who are, who are capable of doing that, and they have been in reasonable form, got them by seven points. Um, are Melbourne playing at their best? Maybe not. Um but their best is better than ours. It's as simple as that. And uh, we'd be kidding ourselves to say that our our best is better than Melbourne. Um, but can we can we really pull something out of the box against them and actually show something? Um, I'll get to us in a minute and what I think about the outs and then the ins potentially. Um, but. They're the highest scoring team in the competition, the D's. And you look at that forward line, so it's not like it's it's not going to feel like it's going to rip the heart out of you, but it can. So there's a lot of sort of blokes who are difficult matchups for us. I'm talking obviously about Kasai Pickett. Without Newman there, does that become Sarge's job? Takes away a little bit of Sarge's run. Fritch is a nightmare. That's a nightmare matchup. So whoever that will be, will be. Um, he's he's your classic third, third tall. Um, and I think last year, from memory, uh, just trying to think who had him last year. I think it might have been McGovern at times. Well, McGovern actually started on picket in that game. And, and Weedering had bloody uh, Melksham. And he gave him the run around. And Melksham's not in the mix at the moment. I'm not quite sure if he's injured or not. He kicked four against us last year. But McDonald always causes us headaches because of his work rate. Because of his work rate. Um, and Kay Chandler has been really impressive with his work rate as well. But he was he ended up going off last week. Don't know if it was a tactical sub or he went off injured. Um, they'll get Hunter back from suspension. No Oliver, which weakens their midfield for the second week running. Um, but they've still got some depth through there, haven't they? Like Petrarca, Harms, Spargo and, and, uh, and Brayshaw can roll through there. Neil Bullen can roll through there. Um, and their wingers are strong. 
their wingers are strong and their defence looks okay still. Very well structured, very experienced with May and Lever. Um, Salem and Hibbert back in. Left footers use the ball really well. Trivers, uh, Trent Rivers is the hard nut. He'll do a roll on one of our smalls. Um, don't know a lot about Jug Midfield other than he is a he is a uh, a rookie. Um, he's showing a little bit. Um, so yeah, and we know we know what obviously freaking Grundy and, and Gorn as that combination can do when they're in the ruck, not necessarily what they can do forward. Although it does pose some headaches if if one of them does drift forward and spend some considerable amount of time there, are we going to be stretched? So let's look at us. Let's have a look at us. Um, so out Newman, Hewitt, Durden, Pitnett, Hollands. Um, so Newman going out, probably Kemp is safe, you would think. So it could be one of either Chincotta or Cowan. Um, take your pick, although I'm not sold on either. I'm dreading the thought of Plowman. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm dreading to get to 20 past six tonight or whenever the teams are out and Plowman's in. And the same with Lockie O'Brien. I am. Um, although, although I feel like that's what might happen, that both may come in. Um, the interesting one for me is Silvani or Lewis Young. Now, Silvani played in defence last week for the VFL against Sydney at the SCG. And Lewis Young, did he spend a bit of time forward and then went back? That's a really interesting one for me because with Pitnet going out, I think everyone's assuming that Silvani comes in. Now, he probably will. He probably will. But it wouldn't surprise me if they went with Lewis Young. I could actually see the reasoning because he could, he could be a backup in the, in the back half as a tall to play on one of those resting ruckmen. And he can, he has played ruck before to give to Connie a chop out. I'm just throwing it out there. In fact, I, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. Although he was very, very, very poor before he went out and there's, there's reports that his attitude has been not great. Um, and we know Silvani's his attitude's pretty good. So he's one week in the VFL. They've both spent one week in the VFL. I'm not quite sure. But don't be surprised if Lewis Young comes in. Um, Durden out with a knee makes it interesting, really interesting. Do we go with the Fogarty or Honey pressure forward? Or is Dow eventually going to get his op opportunity? I want him to play. I really do. I think it's just such a shame. Um, and I don't want to get into to the coach's reasoning and, 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 and hang it on. He hasn't played him. I just, I just think it would be such a shame if he doesn't get an opportunity. Um, and there's obviously reasons, and they've got their reasons. But Jesus Christ, surely with one, two, three, four, five blokes out, that you can't find a spot for a guy that's racking up mid thirties every week. Whether it's through the midfield, you can throw him across half forward. I'm not quite sure, but surely he gets a run. Surely he gets a run. You've got Marchbank as well. I forgot to throw him into the mix as a defender with Newman out, but you would think he doesn't have that pace. Um, and they have got quite a, a sort of flexible front half. Yeah, particularly if they play Spargo um, down there as well. He's a small with uh, Kazai Pickett, who's, yeah, he's a, he's a dangerous unit. Chandler as well. Um Anyway, and there's young Bins as well. He probably played his worst game 
not for the year in the VFL, but he was a little bit quiet against the Swans last week. And I think, I think he might be a long shot. Um, but I'm probably wrong. You know, with Holland's out, is there now an opportunity to bring another first year player in? Anyway, guys, I've been criticised for doing really, really short videos of late. This isn't a really long one. It's only going to be 15 and a half minutes or 16 minutes by the time I stop talking. But yeah, it's going to be a good night. Good night tomorrow night to see to see our boys show something, um, to show us something. And that's, I suppose, the theme of this is why should we believe it now? You know, it's 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 time. It is time. And they understand that, guys. They understand it. Um, and I actually want to... I, I, I want to see what they've fucking really got. I really do. And if that takes... If it, if it means they have to put a line in the sand, um, and I mean a line in the sand in this game and approach this game with the, and be so fucking physical, then, then, then that's what it, that's what it needs. Um, because I don't think we're going to win this game by, by trying to play our method. I really don't. I, I, I just can't see it happening. So it's going to have to take a, something out of the box in regards to old fashioned heart and old fashioned determination and it's got to come from our leaders who are all there. They're all there. Cripper, challenged during the week. Weedering, challenged. Sam Walsh, they're all there. So there's still no excuses not to get the job done. Speak soon.